the Chernobyl exclusion zone, otherwise known as the Chernobyl nuclear power plant zone of alienation, is an official designated area around the site of the Chernobyl nuclear reactor disaster established by the Soviet armed forces soon after the 1986 disaster. It initially existed as an area some 19 miles in radius from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant designated for evacuation and placed under military control. The borders have since been altered and cover a much larger area now of Ukraine. The exclusion zone now covers an area approximately 1,000 square miles in Ukraine immediately surrounding the power plant where radioactive contamination is highest and public access and habitation are restricted. The exclusion zone's purpose is to restrict access to hazardous areas, reduce the spread of radiological contamination, and conduct radiological and ecological monitoring activities. Today, the exclusion zone is one of the most radioactive contaminated areas in the world and draws significant scientific interest for high levels of radiation exposure in the environment as well as increasing interest from tourists. The zone has also become a thriving sanctuary due to the lack of human involvement with some of the highest biodiversity and thickest forests in all of Ukraine. Just to give some backstory on the immediate setup of the exclusion zone, it was established on May 2nd, 1986, soon after the disaster, when it was decided by the Soviet government a rather arbitrary area 19 mile radius from reactor 4. The zone was initially divided into three subzones, the area immediately adjacent to reactor 4. The three different zones had different levels of severity. The first one, the most severe, the black zone, to which evacuees would never return to. The red zone, where evacuees might return to once the radiation levels normalized. And then the blue zone, where children and pregnant women were evacuated starting in the summer of 1986. The original 19-mile zone is estimated to be home to around 197 people living in 11 different villages, as well as in the town of Chernobyl. The number, however, is on the decline down from the previous estimates of 314 in 2007 and 1,200 in 1986 when the initial disaster happened. The residents are mainly senior citizens with an average age around 63. After repeated attempts at expulsion, the authorities have accepted their presence and allowed them to stay with limited supporting services. And you might wonder, well, do those people have radiation? When it comes to radiation within the exclusion zone, it really depends where you are. And people visited a lot, you know, especially before the pandemic, there was a lot of tourism that happened there. Obviously, you had Chernobyl trending in 2022, I believe, when the Russian invasion happened in Ukraine and they, and they tried to take over Chernobyl and then left. You can go to Chernobyl and not develop any radiation very easily. The problem is when you stay there and you start actually living in an area with a high level of radiation, you start moving stuff around. There's radiation within the walls of many of the buildings within Chernobyl. You start going inside of them and trying to live. It becomes a significant problem. But that's why tourists can go there and, and really suffer no radiation. A lot of people saying, you know, it's no worse than one chest x-ray based on the radiation that is there now. It is funny if you watch the HBO series, the reference into that. Uh, but either way, nowadays you can go to Chernobyl and be relatively fine unless you start moving some of the stuff around. They actually had to move a bunch of the soil out that was contaminated with radiation. And I would imagine if you started digging around Chernobyl, you possibly would get radiation from the soil and from the ground. But if you just go in there to explore for like three or four hours, you're going to be relatively fine unless something crazy happens. You fall and kick up radioactive dust. Things like that, it becomes a real big issue, so that's why people are able to go there and not suffer any severe radiation poisoning or anything like that. Now, something that's very interesting that's actually inside the exclusion zone is the German robot Joker, which was deployed trying to clear off the radiation, the graphite from the roofs. It was brought in as a specialty to clear off the crazy radioactive graphite, and unfortunately, the Russians did not tell the Germans the correct number on how actually radioactive the area was, and the Joker pretty much shut down immediately. The radiation sadly completely killed it. Now, when it comes to the current state of the exclusion zone, 
Despite the negative effect of the disaster on human life, many scientists see an overall beneficial effect to the ecosystem. Boy, that's a very disturbing outlook. And I understand what they're saying, but like, oh, the humans aren't involved, so, you know, there's not going to be as much pollution, but man, that's brutal. Basically, humans are not allowed to go in this area, and it turns out to be a better benefit for the overall ecosystem. Really got to wonder where your priorities are in terms of that, but if they're just talking about animal life, you can certainly see the point. Though the immediate effects of the accident were negative, the area quickly recovered and today is seen as very healthy. The lack of people in the area has increased the biodiversity of the exclusion zone in the years since the disaster. In the aftermath of the disaster, radioactive contamination in the air had a decisively negative effect on the rivers, lakes, and groundwater in the area. The radiation resulted in many plant deaths and soil problems, along with a decline in reproductive numbers among both plants and animals. The surrounding forest was covered in radioactive particles, resulting in the death of 400 hectares of most immediate pine trees, though the radiation damage can be found in any area of the tens of thousands of hectares. And that's kind of the prime when you visit one of these places. Well, I guess in specific Chernobyl, because there's not many nuclear disasters are there, but when you visit Chernobyl, really anywhere can be radioactive. You just got to kind of kick it up and kick it into life. That's the issue with it. If you are careful, you put on a mask, you only walk in kind of the tourist areas, you should be fine. The impact of radiation on individual animals has not been studied, but cameras in the area have captured evidence of a resurgence, including rare animals such as the lynx and other vulnerable European bison. Research on the health of Chernobyl's wildlife is ongoing, and there is concern that the wildlife still suffers from some negative effects of radiation exposure. And that's when you see kind of the deformed animals that everyone thinks always come from radiation that, you know, you can see different photos of them. But more, more times than not, it's kind of overblown. People think, oh, all of the animals are wonky because of the radiation of Chernobyl. Uh, that's just not true. Just to give an example of the radiation levels currently in Chernobyl around this zone, you can kind of see a little guide here on how bad it is starting up at the top, single dose, dose fatal within weeks. Obviously, radiation poisoning is just a horrible way to go, but you can see, you know, going all the way down with the two, one and a half, and one, you got different x-rays, a CT scan of the head, radiation per hour at the Fukushima site in 2011. I mean, that is pretty crazy that Fukushima is that low, yet it gets talked about as much as it does. That's kind of like the nuclear hysteria that we're facing. And then you can see a breast x-ray at around under a half. And then this is kind of where everything is right now. Or this was actually measured back in 2009, so I would assume it'd be slightly less than this. But you can see the swimming pool. It's all basically around an x-ray based on the radiation. There are some things like different checkpoints or the 1970 monument, especially around 11. And then looking at the bottom of it, you can see the most radioactive thing that was measured within here was the metal claw that was used in the cleanup. And there, there are photos of people actually posing next to it and, and seeing how radioactive it actually is. And that thing is just creepy in general. Look, and that thing is just creepy in general, just looking at it all rusted. I mean, Chernobyl is really interesting. It's just a complete ghost town. It is very unique in that idea. And, and really, no one can go there uh, you know, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. That's why the idea of nuclear energy, as great as it is, it is an issue when it comes to possibly a meltdown because human beings cannot occupy an area for a very long time, which is a severe issue, especially if it's a widespread event. But either way, guys, that's just the story of the exclusion zone. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.